here I am. Marky Bilson, your voice of choice for a new generation of Tri-City Sports fans. Name of the program, Tri-City Sports Now. It's on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio, as well as www.jetbroadcasting.live. And of course, we archive it on Facebook, and so you can watch uh, on archive our Facebook archives. And get the idea of what we're trying to say here where the viewership on Facebook has been just phenomenal, and so we can only imagine what we're getting over the air. <laughs> it's a little bit different in a market, market 102 TV rating-wise. I think it's 113 radio-wise. There are more TV mar excuse me, there are more radio markets than TV markets. Never mind how that goes. Anyway, than it is, say, in New York or Chicago, or someplace like that. However, I will be talking to some people, for, well, I'll be talking to a person from New York tomorrow, so Jerry Bonkowski, we will, talking NASCAR, we'll have Tony Page talking boxing at one on Friday. Tony Page is a veteran boxing reporter, does an overnight talk show on WFAN in New York City. He is retiring after a generation behind the mic. First time he was ever in Tennessee, Bristol. And I met him there. He was calling fights. Back in the old arena there. I want to ask him about the fatalities in boxing. You know, where does the sport... I mean, is the sport just going to die? I, I wonder about that. I, I've always wondered, and I mentioned this before, if they would ever, you know, do what Howard Cosell once said they should in a previous generation, ban it outright. And that's been talked about for a long, long time. So that's why I don't think it's going to happen, for one thing. Uh, for instance, I mean, there's an old Twilight Zone episode with Lee Marvin. I'm talking, what, 1963? I think that would be 1963 that the episode aired in. 63 or 64? 63. And they're talking about the abolishment of boxing back then. So, I don't think it's going anywhere since we've talked about it for this long. But the thing is, why why isn't it changing? Why don't we have headgear? Why, why are we having 46-year-old fighters overseas breaking into the sport at 46? What is it, That start for cash is the only job they could get, being hit in the face? I mean, you know. So I'll talk to Tony Page tomorrow, as well as Josh Brown of Knock Home Nation. Uh, today, kind of an open boat, unless we get a late call in one of the people that I have uh, talked to, but I think the big story going on in uh, local sports today, it's, uh, it's real easy to figure this out. And it is the, uh, let's see, the injury uh, to the only defensive lineman, Emmett Gooden, that Tennessee has. It really has any experience worth of salt. I guess he was uh, made 18 tackles, wasn't it, last year for a loss. He made 24 tackles. 18, that can't be right, 18 for a loss. He made 24 tackles last year, but he's the only senior. I'm say that. He has 24 career tackles. I didn't make them last year. But uh, eh, let's see what we got. That's not even the right. They don't even have the right stats here. I'll get you the thing. It was 18 tackles for a loss for Emmett Gooden. I could, uh, I'll double check that. But he tore his knee up, and he won't play this year. So now it's Aubrey Solomon or absolutely no experience on defensive line for Tennessee. That'll put a lot of pressure on a secondary. Secondary's good. Is it that good? Probably not. And so, you know... It's just another injury. I'll go over depth chart and all that, Tennessee's defensive line, all this sort of stuff. But it's just another indication of another injury, you know, killing. And I mean killing the Tennessee Volunteers. I want you to think about this here. Now, of course, you know, when Butch Jones was there, it became kind of a joke on how many players would get injured. And his last year there, when he hired as the strength and conditioning coach, Rock Gullickson. At the time, people said, oh, this is great. The Vols, look at them. They're so good. They've acquired a strength and conditioning coordinator from the Los Angeles Rams, from the NFL. 
wow, that's how, you know, media around here put it out. And then more players got hurt than ever before, and it became, wait a minute, what's going on here? And then we found out the reason why Rock Gullickson was hired as Tennessee's strength and conditioning coach in the first place, because the Rams certainly aren't missing them, are they? I don't know, maybe, you know, that's how Todd Gurley's uh, injuries, whatever they are, get to stay in the shadows, eh, you know? But nevertheless, you've got Rock Gullickson coming. Why did Rock Gullickson come in? We talked about this before. Because he had worked with Butch Jones at Rutgers. He was a strength, they was on that strength and conditioning uh, staff at Rutgers in the early 90s when Butch Jones was the wide receivers coach there. So, in other words, Butch Jones was looking to the past. All right, he knew who he was. He'd been in the NFL. I'm sure Butch Jones, this guy will help us out. And it just became, you're hiring, I hate to say old school. I mean, you're not hiring old school. You're just hiring past their prime. Maybe the Rams don't want him anymore for that reason. You're hiring old crony. You're hiring someone who it looks like got the players at Tennessee hurt. Now think about that for a second. Now last year, Brandon Kennedy. That was the big loss up front. You know, there are two big injuries. Brandon Kennedy, I think, was one of them. It was supposed to be the starting center of the transfer from Alabama. Got hurt real early on, missed for the entire year. That didn't help matters out at all. Jared Garantano took his lumps, but he started every game. I would have liked to have seen Keller Christen, seen what he could have done. Forgot about him, didn't we? You know. And there were other situations. I mean, you know, uh, Darren Kirkland never seemed to really recover from his injuries that he had. You can't put Trey Smith on last year's coaching staff, I think. Blood clots in the lungs, that, you know, that is a health problem. That's not necessarily an injury problem. But the idea, you know, you heard this now, that Gooden goes down. And I got to start thinking, you know, it's fifth day of full pads. I started thinking, what were they doing? That a guy would tear up his ACL, that would get hit that hard, that such an injury would occur in practice. I mean, I did this whole thing last week about we got to get rid of the preseason in the NFL because too many players are injured for the year in the preseason. Jordy Nelson just retired. Signed one of those cheap one-day contracts with the Packers. So I get to retire a Packer. I always thought those were just ridiculous, but... I mean, you want to talk about total show, but regardless, uh, situation comes out that Jordy Nelson isn't going to play anymore, but remember 2015 hurt in the preseason, out for the year. Yeah. I was thinking about this. Oh, the Peyton Manning fans, Tracy Porter's a bad name to you, right? Through the pick in the Super Bowl. What if Andrew, Adrian Gonzalez wasn't hurt early on? What if he was able to... Maybe, you know, you've got another option. You've got a, that receiver is open and Manning goes that way. And the Colts win the Super Bowl. And I mean... But that was an early season injury 10 years ago. Adrian Gonzalez, wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts. I hate saying that. Yeah, I know I'm that old school. See, I'm old school to it, you know. Roddy Piper once said, old school's cool. You know? And it can be tradition. There's nothing wrong. You know, tried and tested methods, the basics, you know, learning from history, this sort of thing. Yeah, that's all good. But I got to ask this, and I just thought this, could the balls be just two yesterday? And I'll give you an example of what I'm saying here. I mean, Phil Fulmer is yesterday's coach. And I've talked about this. I've said, you know, it's interesting pattern that Tennessee is taking as, as compared to Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt hires Malcolm Turner, athletic director, former G League president. 
And that's the way the athletic director position is going. I mean, the G League threatens to, as well as this new, you know, agent requirement that college basketball is putting out, uh, they really do, in my opinion, threaten the way that we've always looked at college basketball. I think that the amount of talent in college basketball is going to go down. How do we react to it? Well, Vanderbilt, they hire, like I said, a modern athletic director, former president of the G League. Tennessee hires old coach. Now, he's legendary coach. Don't get me wrong. We're talking about Phil Fulmer. But I've said this before. I'll say it again. The athletic director position generally doesn't go to old coach anymore. And when it does, oh yeah, how's that been working? I mean, South Carolina did it with Ray Tanner. How's old coach really worked for Ray Tanner? I mean, football hasn't regained the glories they had under Steve Spurrier when they were peaking. Baseball hasn't won a national title. I guess the Gamecocks went to the Final Four in basketball. And yeah, the women's basketball program is pretty good. But was that because of Ray Tanner or Don Staley? You know, I mean, that sort of thing. Let's look at who Phil Fulmer hires, right? When he is the consultant at ETSU, I've talked about this a million times, Carl Torbush. Carl Torbush is the sort of guy that a Phil Fulmer will hire. Carl Torbush's career peaked when Phil Fulmer's coaching career peaked in 1998. After that, hey, he was at Carson Newman for a while, was Torbush. But that's who Fulmer basically hired to be the ETSU coach. He was old coach. I'm not putting in any JUCOs. And what happens? ETSU goes 11-22. and 22. When it comes time to hire a women's basketball coach, Kelly Harper comes in. A, the point guard of the Lady Vols glorious past. But a mid-major coach. Someone you don't have to pay as much as her peers among elite women's basketball schools, if Tennessee still is an elite women's basketball school. And Tennessee didn't pay her like her peers. Balzer offense is going to be saved by Jim Chaney, old school coach. Phil Fulmer hired a defensive coordinator, not an offensive coordinator, to be his head coach, and Jeremy Pruitt. And what has Jeremy Pruitt done? He's done some old-fashioned thing. Limited media access. Now, I love tradition. I think that it, I mean, it's identity. It's great. But Tennessee wants to tell us that they'll be elite again because they used to be elite in football. And there are a lot of schools that used to be elite in football that are still waiting to be elite again. Colorado, let's just say. And... There was the feeling before this year began, before Gooden's injury, that maybe you know Tennessee this year could have that winning record at seven and five. That was the feeling. Now, if they do, it'll be a victory for tradition. But if this Gooden injury prevents the Vols' defense from doing anything, the Vols won't be learning from their history that you don't want to hire and relive two thousand and eight. They'll be trying to live in the past. Deer hunts offer hunters.